At the beginning, I was heartbroken, and uh, he always he always told me if I was going to ride bulls, I need to make sure I, I'm right with God. And so with God, with God. Okay. So uh, at first, I, I, it, it was it was more heartbreaking. I didn't want to do it no more because all it did was remind me of my grandpa. Grandpa. And uh, but as soon as I got back with the with God, and I start going back to the Bible, it led me right back to my grandpa. It brought everything together, and it was just that motivation that uh, I. I I don't think without my my steps in life that I would be where I'm at today. What's going on guys? Tank Adams coming at you from Shawnee, Oklahoma. Bareback rider, professional bull rider. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video from TM University and today here with me today I've got the big tank in the house Let's give it up thank a big tank. Let's give it up a big tank, man. man. How you doing brother? Good, good um, Been hanging in there, man um, Just got back from Portland, Oregon uh, we did pretty good down there. About to head to, uh, I think tonight we're at Cowboys Oklahoma City, and then tomorrow is a pro rodeo at uh, Purcell, Oklahoma. So, yeah, doing good, man. Good stuff, uh, good stuff, good stuff. And for the sake of uh, the people, you know, mm -hmm. my subscribers, your followers, mm -hmm. we don't really know you as a person. Can you please just... Give us a little introduction about yourself, man. Uh, first, give honor to God. Thank everybody for uh, tuning in and everything. Uh, I want to thank my sponsors, Tank Trucks and Transport, uh, Tecovis, um, all those guys that just kind of stick with us. Um, Red Dirt Rodeo, they've got a big rodeo coming up this weekend, and I believe they're in Frederick, Oklahoma this weekend. Um, again, I'm Tank Adams from Shawnee, Oklahoma, professional bull rider, uh, bareback rider. Um, if if they buck, I'll get on them, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, so, yeah, um, I moved up here to, we're in the um, south side of Edmond right now, Edmond, Oklahoma. Um, been up here for about two years. Um, really getting ready, the season's really just kicking off, firing for everybody. So, like I said, this weekend I'm in Oklahoma City. That's just kind of a tune up, hit a pro rodeo Saturday, per sale, get my name on the board and start climbing up these stats. Uh, but yeah, man, I come from I come from the country. 
moved to the hood, then back to the country. So it was, it was kind of like an up and down for me until I figured out that rodeo was the route that I wanted to take, you know? Um, so just about seen it all, heard it all, done it all, man. I've, I've hauled cattle, hauled bulls, um, uh, hauled oversized loads, did a lot of oversized uh, over the road work, um, own a trucking company, my wife and I, and, uh, dude, we're just every day, every day. It's a grind for us. Thank you, Mr. Tank. Thank you, Mr. Tank, man. Yeah. If you don't, you know, how was your growing up like, man? Growing uh, up? growing up, growing up was real tough for us, man. We were, we were, had four kids in the house. Uh, my older sister, myself, and then I got a younger sister and then a younger brother. The youngest is my baby brother who's now 26 years old. Um, but uh, we started in a trailer park and uh, came from the trailer park, um, moved to the country to where we had just our trailer. So really didn't have no neighbors to be like. Still in Oklahoma too, the country? Yeah, still oh. in the country. It, uh, we were out of New Lima, Oklahoma. Wow. Um, came from New Lima, uh, moved to Shawnee. That's when I got back in the streets, got in the streets, started running the streets a little bit. It was really nobody rodeoing in Shawnee. Everybody's just riding bikes, rodeoing, selling drugs, doing whatever they did in the streets, you know. Me at a young age, I just kind of picked up on the environment that I was in. Uh, moved from there to, uh, ro started rodeoing, moved from there, ended up going to uh, college and rodeoing in college. Uh, broke my ankle in college and when I dropped out of college for after I broke my ankle, I dropped out of college and got my pro card, man, and uh, never really looked back on it. Uh, kind of had the motivation of my uh, grandfather that put me in the game passing away. That really just motivated me to just keep going and keep going. And at first, I really wasn't no good. You know, I kind of had these hiccups and I'd enter so many places. They used to call me a donator, basically, you know, what those does that guys, mean? those guys that, uh, those guys that show up and they enter, but they don't practice. And you can tell that they don't practice because how they perform. Okay. And, uh, I, I realized, uh, going to a lot of black rodeos that either we're all about to be some donators or somebody's got to start practicing. It's one guy went in the pot and I wanted to be that guy. So I start following the guys like, Danelle Tipton, James Lowe, all these guys that was going out there and winning the whole pot while all of us, all the rest of us was just donating. So I started uh, really just not not uh, being mentor bomb, but just keeping an eye on them, watching how they're moving. And uh, and yeah, after that, uh, the rest is history, I guess. Wow, that's a long journey, man, bro. Yeah. Uh, what college did you go to? I rode bulls at Oklahoma State. Oh, um, OSU? I was, I was at OSU for two years. Um, I broke my ankle. After you go D1, you can't sign D1 again. Um, also, this was the time that the, the, they were taking the sport away more so and they're making it a club. They weren't giving no, they weren't paying no fees. They weren't paying no tuition. They weren't paying for no books, uh, no room so and board. they pretty much taking the scholarships. Yeah, they're taking the scholarships way. all the way off the board. Um, and it became a OSU club. So when they became a club, I couldn't afford it from the get go. Um, so when they became a club and I broke my ankle, you can't sign D1 again, or they kind of think like you're, um, like you could be recruiting if you will. Okay. So then I had to go D2, um, from D1. Well, same I college? Went, or? No, I went to D2 to a, uh, to Muskogee. Muskogee. Um, and I went to Muskogee. I was there on a scholarship. Um, I was there for about a year. Um, I hurt the same ankle. Um, just kind of playing around in the practice pen. I kind of, I was kind of big headed. I knew I was uh, most likely the best, better of the bull riders there, and um, wasn't taking practice seriously. Uh, end up hurting the same ankle. Um, after I hurt that ankle, um, a lot of those classes. It's an old school college um, uh, called Bacon. A lot of those schools are a lot of those. Uh, buildings they're not really wheelchair accessible my ankle would hurt every time I got up and I just kind of kind of faded out told my boy to come get me in the middle of the night and he snuck in there on the campus ground loaded up all my stuff and loaded me up in the truck last and uh, we shot out of there man and uh, I got back home got my ankle better brought my pro card and uh, yeah been wow. been rodeoing ever since wow wow that's like a long journey man yeah bro. um I've been blessed, man. I've been blessed. Uh, I, I look at, I look back on my journey, and at any point in time, it could have went the other direction. So, um, even times where I was just making the wrong mistakes, I, I've luckily enough had God by my side, and uh, you know, just saved me from the small stuff that uh, 
that I shouldn't have been doing in the first place. So, yeah, I've been blessed, bro. Wow. Being a black bull rider, mm -hmm. right, how does it feel for you? Not for everybody. How does it feel for you as a person? You know, um, to me, I see bull riding as a white folks sport. Mm -hmm. and um, I would say to myself, you are the first black bull rider mm -hmm. that I've ever seen or met. Yeah. Not until you took me to Cowboys OKC, mm -hmm. then I saw other black, black bull, bull riders. riders. Yes, sir. So how does it feel being a black bull rider at first when you first um, started? I think, uh, so the world's definitely evolving. Um, when I first got into it, the only place that you really felt, not that they didn't accept you, but the only place you felt accepted was at the black rodeos. Um, okay. And I was, in the, I was in the time where you started seeing more and more uh, black bull riders. You start seeing uh, more and more uh, mixed guys that was just breaking into the rodeo world, getting their pro cards and kind of taking it to the next level. Um, so I went from, I, I went from like going from all these black rodeos, these big black rodeos, old muggy, bowly rodeo, um, lima, all these good old school black rodeos that uh, really had a history on just molding us to slowly breaking into the pro rodeos, like the, the, the nail tiptons and stuff. And uh, as, we're, as we're coming through, um, the crowd, I like to say that the crowd supported it, but you really didn't get the, the cheer that everyone else got, yeah. you know? You didn't always get the cheer. And, and, and that's not always the case. It kind of depends on what city you're in, what state you're in. Um, but you're not always got to get, you're not always going to be treated, you wouldn't always treat it the same way. And it would, to be able to rodeo in this world and rodeo professionally, you got to be able to accept that and really just kind of be a chameleon and be able to adapt to wherever environment you're in, whether you're in Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, you know, wherever you're at, you got to be able to more so just adapt. So um, not only are you got to be good at riding bulls, but you also got to be able to, you know, it's a business side of it too. It's a, it, it, behind the scene, how are you carrying yourself? Are you carrying yourself like a cowboy? Are you, or are you still trying to be like you're in these streets and showing up how you want to show up, you know? So uh, when they realize that you're really taking it serious, I think you're just accepted by the world as a cowboy. And that, that changes the game for you, you know, altogether. So at what point do you take the bull riding serious? Um, like, like, <clears throat> I, I always thought I took it serious until um, my grandpa, like I said, is the one that got me into bull riding. And to me, I was taking it serious because I was getting on all the time. I was take, I was going through all these injuries and still getting on. And um, I thought that was serious enough. And uh, one, t one day my grandpa said, uh, uh, just healthy as ever. But uh, he said one day, he said, I think I'm going to have surgery on my hip. And I was like, yeah? And he said, yeah, just from all the wear and tear and the bulls, I've been on the bucking horses. And I said, yeah, let me know how it goes. Um, he ended up passing away in surgery, oh, unfortunately. Surgery. And, uh, and that you was mean, he just- He said he passed away during the surgery? Yeah. Wow. He passed away in the surgery. And that for a second kind of slowed me down. I'd say for about a month, it slowed me down. And it was, it, it was something that was just, it, but at the same time, a month later after I was just like over all of that, it really lit a fire into me like, OK, if you're going to do this, you need to do it. So, I mean, my training went to the next level. M me being in the gym went to the next level. My eating habits went to the next level. Uh, I really start eating to fuel up and not eating to be happy and uh, watching my weight. And uh, it, it's, it's the smallest thing because um, 20 pounds may not mean much to a person, but when you're on the side of a bull, it's more so a counterweight. You know, you yeah. got 20 pounds hanging, 20 more pounds Drugs hanging. You if you just hold a 20 pound weight and hold it on your side, you can feel the difference. So when you start slimming yourself up and just feeling more like an athlete, that's when I knew I was at the next level. That's when I knew I was ready to buy my pro cards. And um, that's when it all started kicking off and stuff started coming together. Was it uh, grandpa's passing their way? Was it the motivation for you to be like, man, I got to do this for him. Um, I got to carry on the touch. Absolutely, but not at the beginning because at the beginning I was heartbroken and uh, 
he always he always told me if I was going to ride bulls, I need to make sure I, I'm right with God. And so with God, with God. Okay. So uh, at first, I, I, it, it was it was more heartbreaking. I didn't want to do it no more because all it did was remind me of my grandpa. Grandpa. And uh, but as soon as I got back with the with God and I start going back to the Bible. It led me right back to my grandpa. It brought everything together, and it was just that motivation that uh, I I I don't think without my my steps in life that I would be where I'm at today. So it, it turned out for the better uh, as far as uh, just you know following God for the most part and just keeping Him first in our life. So did your dad ride a bull? He did was not. He um, so, like I said, I'm from the. Uh, I came from the. Uh, I, I came from the country, which was my stepdad. Okay. Um, I never knew my dad growing up. Uh, my dad lived in like Oklahoma City, was in the military and all that stuff. So I never met him until I was in high school, and OSU and other colleges was looking for me, and they got on Facebook and ran into my real dad. Wow. So they're like, "Yeah, on Facebook," and I didn't even have a Facebook at the time. And at that time. It was supposed to be for like college kids, college kids, you know. So that's how I kicked off, and uh, that's actually they they more so introduced me to my she dad. Too, wow. And uh, but my stepdad was a cowboy. He was real country. Um, people already always brought him horses that they couldn't break, and if he couldn't break, if they couldn't break them, we could, you know. He'd he'd hold his leg up while I jump on him, and he'll let him go, and we just I go down the road, down this dirt road, and that was really much. Uh, we lived so far in the country, that was our entertainment, you know. We, we, we had more fun breaking wild horses than, you know, going to the city. It is oh, just hey, 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 h